My name is Kishia Thorpe and I'm a licensed principal and I teach English to 12th graders at the International High School Langley Park in Bladensburg, Maryland in Prince George's County Public Schools. My students are mainly immigrants and refugee students and they're all English language learners. 100% of them are English language learners and they're from different countries across the world um, including uh, South America, uh, different um, places in Africa and um, Central America, the Caribbean, and also in the Middle East. My students are a very diverse population and with that they come with quite a bit of challenges. So especially during the pandemic, the pandemic has really magnified a lot of the challenges that my students face, especially in their communities. Uh, about 98% of my students are from impoverished backgrounds and they're on free and reduced meals in the school system. So when we think about how the pandemic has really affected them, my students have really struggled a lot. Uh, they struggled with food insecurity. They struggled with moving around because of not having somewhere to really stay. Uh, most of my, some of my students are transient. Some of them because they are, they travel to the U.S. by themselves and so they don't really have a lot of family and so they move around quite a lot. So during the pandemic, it was a struggle for a lot of my students to really show up for school and show up on camera, on Zoom. The virtual learning is something that was very difficult for not just my students but also for teachers. You know, one day you were at school. I remember we were planning this big event the next day. Uh, so it was Wednesday and the next day was Thursday and we were supposed to have this big event at the school. And then right before school ended, we were in a panic. We we're in a rush. We got this message and it says, all teachers, you need to start preparing to make sure that you have enough work for our students for the next few weeks. And so, of course, because most of us were teaching from our classroom, teaching from our whiteboards and so on, uh, now we're thinking, okay, how do we prepare for our students for the next few weeks? And so it was like a real panic. And so they sent students home and teachers had to stay back and really plan instruction and think about what this would look like for our students instructionally. Um, over the computer. Luckily for my school, our students are, have one-on-one -on -one technology, so the transition was not, was not as hard for us as teachers, but I know the transition was quite difficult for my students. And one of the main reasons why is, like I told you earlier, a lot of my students are from um, low-income families and from marginalized communities that don't necessarily have resources in their homes they don't necessarily have access to Wi-Fi and and all the other forms of technology and that would pose its own challenge and that's also one of the reasons why initially our attendance rate plummeted and which really made us as teachers try to figure out how can we make sure that we get our students back into the classroom, get our students back into learning so that we don't have a learning loss and we don't have all these learning gaps because learning recovery is something that is really hard for a lot of students and teachers to really figure out strategies to make sure that students uh, really get back the learning that they had um, lost in the beginning. So. As teachers, we, come to, we came together, we collaborated, we did a lot of different meetings, we uh, revisited our strategic plans, revisited our goals and our missions, and make sure that whatever we are thinking about for our students, it's, we are keeping in mind the different obstacles that they have to overcome as we are trying to overcome as well. A lot of teachers also had to stay home with their young ones and had to really figure out and navigate um, those situations myself. I have a daughter and I had to figure out how I was going to support her being at home and learning and at the same time teach from home as well. So ultimately as teachers we figure it out because that's what we do. We know that students are going to show up for us and so we have to show up for them as well. You know one of the things also that my students 
expressed was the need for food. And uh, what I did was develop a food program by reaching out to community partners and also business leaders in our community to make sure that our students were able to have the food that they need and their families as well. Uh, we already know that hungry students don't really learn and so and they're also not going to show up for you because in our immigrant community most of our students had to go to work they had to pro help to provide for their families they have younger siblings also that they have to take care of and just being able to go to their doorstep with a box of groceries was something that was they appreciated so much just knowing that a teacher cared enough to check in on them to make sure that they emotionally they are safe um, physically they're in a safe space and just to be empathetic to their needs um, i think that made our students feel that they had someone in their corner and I was glad that I could do that for them. And so, much, so many other teachers showed up for students in different ways as well. And it just reminds us how much that we, as a teach, teaching community, um, we need the village to make sure that all our students receive the best education possible and all the, sir, all the things that they need uh, the, um, to be successful adults and, um, and future leaders as we are uh, fostering in them.